welcome to episode 125 of the Access Noise podcast. I'm Mark Miller. Thanks for listening. In this episode, I speak to former Kasabian frontman Tom Main about his first solo album, The Reckoning. If you missed the previous episode, I spoke to Graham Lambert from Manchester Legends and Spiral Carpets. So check it out, and if you like the podcast, please subscribe on your favourite listening platform, give us a rating, and leave a comment. Before we begin, here's Daniel Lynch with what's been happening on Access Noise this week. In the review section, Laurie Gava has been listening to the new album from City and Colour. The Love Still Held Me Near is a 12-song tribute to the best friend of frontman Dallas Green. Laurie says Green's honest lyrics and the band's sonic progression makes for a noteworthy album. Standout track is The Things We Choose to Care About. Sinking Ships is the new album from Alberta Cross. Stuart Evans gives it top marks with expansive production and a standout cover of a Sharon Von Etten track. There's gig news this week from Busted, who will play a 20th anniversary tour, and Morrissey, who will be around the UK and Ireland in July. There's new music from The K's, Therapy, and a new video for Hosier's Eat Your Young, the title track of his EP released last month. Stay up to date at accessnoise.com. Nearly three years after departing Kasabian, Tom Main returns with The Reckoning, his first solo album, released on the 28th of April. I caught up with Tom to talk about writing and recording the album, how he feels about being a solo artist, his time in Kasabian, upcoming live shows and lots more. So sit back, relax and enjoy the Access Noise podcast with Tom Main. Tom, welcome back to the Access Noise podcast. How are you? Very good, very good. It's good to, good to speak to you again. Thank you, mate. Yeah, you're just about to put out your, your debut solo album, which we'll get to. But first of all, you've been named as one of the best front men of your generation. In your mind, who are the best front men who inspired you? Oh, God, I mean, like, front men. I mean, anyone from Mick Jagger, like Michael Jackson. Uh, well, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be on stage without... Mark see Michael Jackson and, and 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 loving him as a kid. I think a lot a lot of kids can stand by that in the eighties, can't they? Um, I admired Michael Jackson. Uh, everything about him. Freddie Mercury, of course. I love um, I love Mick Jagger. You know, of course, Liam Gallagher. You know, there's all these there's all these different kind of frontmen. David Bowie, Iggy Pop. You know, uh, Clearwater Credence. You know that that Fogarty. You know, all these amazing musicians. Bob Marley. You know, they're all got unique things about them. So, but I mean, obviously, when I was growing up, Liam Gallagher was the idol frontman, wasn't it? So, you know, um, and he still is amazing. <laughs> and yeah. he's doing, you know, so yeah, you know, you got to know Liam very well. Over the years, yeah, yeah. This is, I've got I've got great memories of um, Oasis and Liam and and Noel. Fantastic memories. Yeah, had some really good times. You know, uh, amazing memories when I was younger in my youth. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. We had a blast. You know, so I've got nothing but admiration for Liam. You know, and and Noel, and Noel as well. You know, to fucking you know, it, 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 do what they do. You know? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to Noel because you're going to be playing some playing a show um, later on. But we'll get to that. You're about to release your first solo album, The Reckoning, in April, nearly three years after leaving Kasabian. Did you always know in your mind that you would make new music again? Well, it, it yeah, because it, it's what I do, isn't it? You know, I, I had to, you know, you know, there were, I was in a big band, you know, there were a huge band, Kasabian. Um, you know, and then I've always wanted to make me, I'm a musical, you know, I like writing songs, I like melodies, I like loud music i like the passion i like the umph that comes i like everything that, that comes with it it's, you know that's what i do um i always in the back of my mind you know i, I always um, wanted to make music you know always but you know i was in a band big band and um you know like i said dictatorship was there and that and you know i couldn't i wasn't allowed to well bring anything forward to the to the table you know which is quite frustrating after a while you know it, it, and the same thing happens with a lot of bands, I imagine. But listen, it, it's what it is, you know. Yeah, um, you, you were never, as you said, you were never given the chance to write songs in Kasabian. So how did you feel collaborating um, and writing songs on The Reckoning? 
Oh, I mean, it's amazing. I, I come down here a few years ago and um, I met the guy, Stu Gareth, who's p- produced the record and co-written with me with Banana Infidel as well. And we just come down and we had a, we, we, we had a, we had a trial session, you know, we got the guitars out and it worked. And yeah, I mean, th- these guys have been amazing. The band have been amazing. Um, and it's been, it, it's been a, the, 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 the work on the album, it, 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 it it's collection of emotion, rawness, sadness, passion, happiness. You know, it's got all these qualities, you know, human qualities about it. Um, and, and these guys helped me find, 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 find me where I was in that time, you know. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a very emotional album. So, yeah, so it was fitting in. You know, obviously I was nervous um, coming down here trying to write songs of where I was in my life. Um, and it just, it just happened. It just happened. And I'm just really pleased, you know, and it gave me, um, a lot more confidence in myself. Cause I was, uh, I was on a proper low. Um, you know, I felt, uh, I just wasn't me. Uh, I was, um, vulnerable, you know, uh, um, you know, scared, scared is the word about how things were going to turn out writing the songs. Um, you know, just all these emotions, what's going to happen, why are they going to get on with me and that, all that. And and the music record, you know, you can hear it, you know, how passionate it is. And we had some, we've had some moments in here, you know, we had, a lot, we had some tears when we had a playback. And I mean, actually singing and actually singing in the booth and all my emotions come out, man, you know, and stuff, you know, we've had some really amazing moments as well. So it's been, it's been, it's been a joy and, and, it, and it's been all these feelings in, in me as well you know i had to get out and put onto record and, and, it, and it worked so I, i'm grateful for that yeah. yeah and it was it was because it was the first time you actually writing songs and, and writing lyrics and melodies what what came first for you the, the the melodies or the lyrics well it's just melodies we just kind of sat around we just it just come you know i mean i most of it i'd say i'd say 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 i'd say something and then we go oh what did you what what what, what did you just say then write that down, that's a gross, that's, what? And then we'd build around that, just just me coming out with these fucking stupid sayings or whatever it is. Like, I don't know, for instance, how, that's how we do business for one of them. And that's, oh, how we do business. And then, and then you know, we have a melody and just work around it. And yeah, away, away we go, you know. I've been, I've been really enjoying the album. There's full rock, hands in the air, belters, like what you did in Kasabian. But there's also tender oh, moments. Like, and- that really means a lot, man. Do you think... Is it mature the record, or do you think it's happy? It's quite youthful. What would you say? What would you? What would you say it is? Well, it's about to say there. You know, there's the big belters. There's tender moments. There's a lot of self reflection. Um, you get a lot off your chest. Yeah. Um, so oh, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's the old cliche. It's a musical journey. You know, it's a roller coaster. You know, and it takes you on a ride. Was it was it therapeutic writing and recording the songs? Therapeutic. It was more of um. I'd say it's more of therapy, mate. Than, than anything, than therapeutic. Mm-hmm. It was more therapy for me to know if I was okay to do it again because I was frightened to death, you know. I, uh, you know, uh, I'm about this big, you see, mate, and I have to get my confidence back. So, you know, so it, it's it's happened, it's here, it's delivered, you know. <laughs> well, there's so many brilliant songs on the Thank album, so, so let's let's talk about some of them. Thank um, you. The opening track, Rise, slowly builds and then kicks in. You sing, I'm going to rise again. It feels so good. Now, yeah. this was at the start of the album. So how far in the, into the album did you write this? Surely it was something you wanted to say from the start. Would that be oh, right? Yeah, well, yeah, Rise was, 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 Rise was one, one of the... I mean, weirdly enough, actually, brother, Rise kind of come later on in the sessions. There was a lot of songs we written that thought, nah, we ain't going to put them on the album anymore. And we kept writing new... And, uh, we do like three or four... We've done four songs, I think, new ones. We're like, these are better than them. So let's put, you know, so we'd have to chop and change a lot. So, but Rise, yeah, Rise again. Yeah, of course, it's about having the power back and owning your throne. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it feels so good. It's about me coming back and expressing myself, you know. So, yeah, and it does feel good. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic way to oh, start the start it, album. Listen, but it is. But the thing is, you know, it's going to it's gonna have essence of Kasabian because it, what, I was in Kasabian. Uh, that's the whole point, isn't it? You know, so... Yeah, like even in deep dive, there's the woo woos, there's the nineties yeah. piano vibe. Yeah, of course, brother. But yeah, but mate, I've, I've 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 stayed true to what I am though, haven't I? I've not, you know. What do you think, brother? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, yeah. you know who it is straight away. 
Yeah. You, you, you know, and when that oh, voice kicks in. No it, it, it really, thank you. It means a lot, man, that does. Thank you so much. It really does. My favourite song on the album is Don't Give In. Wow. Just when you think it's over, they pull you back in. A bit of the nod to the Albertinos line in The Godfather 3. Yeah, well, that's well, that, that's what Banan, Banan kept saying it to me. He keeps doing Al Pacino. We use that. We, that is Al Pacino. <laughs> we've nicked that fucker. So, yeah, yeah, we've nicked that. We can get away with that one. So, that, that is Al Pacino. They pull you back. Yeah, you're right. That I, You've nailed that. Yeah. Banan will be loving that. Yeah, it's an Al Pacino line. It's great, isn't it? It's great. Nothing gets past me. I thought, I thought we'd nick that. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's a beautiful, big, bliss, blissful rock song, isn't it? So yeah. you know, yeah. Well, at the start they are, but then the the album settles down with "Scared." You know, it's a beautiful song. You sing, "We've yeah, all been that, there. Yeah. We've all been scared." You know, we, we all have. And I just got the sense that this was obviously um, about what you went through in the past few years. So, so w- was that a hard song to write? Yeah, I mean, that's that again. That was a very, um, very. Um, um, emotional m- moment we had doing it. You, well, you can hear it in the, you can hear it and you can feel it. You know, um, that was yeah, that 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 was that was a really amazing moment, really. It, it, recording that in the studio it was a one. It, I think I did one take. I think we did it in one take or two because um, I broke down. You know, and everyone, everyone was just yeah, everyone was just in the moment, and we just I think I think I only did one take. I think I did some overdubs on the choruses. That's about it. We kept. I think we kept the take because it was so real and so genuine and just emotional. You can hear my voice. You can hear it. You know. So yeah, I mean, I suppose. Uh, you know, like I said, bro, I, these emotions had to come out and they've, they've gone onto record. You know, what other way? What other way can I do it? <laughs> I can't. You know. Yeah. You have to write about what you know. Yeah, exactly, brother. Exactly. Not right in the pack. I don't know. The troops are on fire anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that. You know? so, yeah. Well, funny you say that. You know, when you're when Serge would have presented you with, with lyrics like that, you know, did you, did, did you say, look, how can I sing that? Or were you happy to sing that? Or I loved did it, you have yeah, any I loved, input? Man, the thing is, I loved, I loved being in that band, man. You know, it was my family and my brothers. You know, I had an amazing time. Shit happens, doesn't it? You know, I'm not the I might be the first, I might be the last. You know, bands break up, fall out, sack each other, whatever it is, you know. It look, I had a great time and it yeah, you know, and the best thing about it is as well, you know, like I got nothing to prove to anybody at all. Like, you know, I've got nothing to prove. Here's my solo record, get on that. All I could do is build myself up from that and keep keep making music. I've got no to prove, you know. I mean, from going from opening Glastonbury in two thousand and four to ten years later headlining the pyramid, it's a pretty good leap in it. So I hold them things sacred to me. The things that I've done and you know, you know, and with 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 the, with the band in, in 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 the past, I hold them things dearly to my heart always. You know, so yeah, I've got all them great great, great memories. You know, yeah. Have you been following what the band have been doing since you, you left? Know what, mate? I don't. You know, I just let do what they do. You know, of course. You know, I. I it, they're doing their thing. It's their business, you know. And let bygones be bygones, mate. You know, you know. Well, just one more thing on on them. Um, you know, I read a lot, and I I think think the same. You know, um, fans say Kasabian isn't the same since you left. So, so how do you feel about that? Well, it's it, it ain't the same, is it? You know, of course, because we were we were we were a family, weren't we? And we loved each other very much dearly. But things happen. Um. It ain't the same, of course it ain't the same, but you know, uh, um, he's doing his thing and he's he's trying to get a new new thing across for, for Kasabian, a new sound or whatever it is, which you know, which are fair play, you know, I can't I can't knock that. You know, try and rewrite it, it's great. If it works, that is, but you know, it's what it is. <laughs> but then again, fans have got the racket in common, you know. So let's talk about your latest single. Everyone's you. addicted to something. So everyone's addicted to something. What can you tell me about that? Everyone's it well, but it's just again, it's just uh, it was just a saying. Everyone is addicted to something. Whether I mean, my whether it be love or whatever it is, everyone's got an addiction, haven't they? Whether you what I need a bath every night, I can't go without having a bath, or I need to do that, or or this love. But I suppose I suppose the song is about love, having addiction for love. You know, about how passionate you are and 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 what what love does to you. You know, but every, listen, everyone, everyone's got something, haven't they? You know, so the last song on the reckoning. Wow, what a way to end the album! Wow, the rack- man, 
The reckoning is when we're judged by God for our actions in life. But when you sing, I'll see you at the reckoning, I'll see you at the reckoning, I'll meet you at the water's edge, is it God you're talking to in the song? Who are you talking to? Whatever, whatever it is, or, you know, yeah, it is, you know, I'm just, I'll see you there. And, and I wanted the title to be really powerful. And the reckoning, yeah, because it's in the Bible and all that. I've done all my homework. Don't worry. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. What, what, whatever it is, I'll see you there, man. You know, whatever, whatever God it is, whatever, it, whatever it'll be, whatever it is. My God's ET, but you know, <laughs> they're my gods. You know, so I believe in stuff. But yeah, it's just, it's just. You know, I've had a lot of thinking. I've had a lot of time to think and recap on myself, and um, you know, uh, and I just thought the title was right. That was all. Yeah, it made total sense when I seen it. Oh, thank you, brother. We're, we're going to call it yeah. names like Solo, not like not like Volume One, or you know what I mean. And we had all the ideas, you know. Uh, I mean, and in the end, I was like, oh god, 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 god. It's it's, it's easy to name my album, isn't it? I, I, and I was struggling. I was going, oh no, no. I got hold of the Bible, the reckoning. Right, beautiful, done. And the record company were like, whoa, whoa. I was like, yeah. We're keeping it let's do it and they're like we get you now let's do it so there you go <laughs> yeah it definitely sums it up thank you brother uh, what song on the album was the most challenging to get right um it's pop, 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 you know i think we just went with the flow brother you know we didn't really think about it. we just made music i mean the reckoning that was the last thing we recorded you know that was the last right. song on the album. It makes sense. It's like the body. It's like the body. It's like the heart of the whole album. It, it it's like a pink. It reminds me of Pink Floyd. Swirly, mishmash, beautiful, powerful. You know, um, oh, it's my favorite. And there's there's really nice textures, sound yeah. textures. I mean, I sang my little art out on that as well. You know, so yes, that's it's definitely an emotional tune. Yeah, thanks, brother, man. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be the song on the album that means the most to you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's a do mean different things to me, like better in the dark and things. They're fun. They're like fun songs, man. You know, like a bit, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of full speed rock and roll, a bit of fun. You know, mess around. You know, you know, there's some, you know, like everyone's addicted, uh, acrobat things. It's just, it's just me putting a needle into my tank and, f- and, and fueling my car to drive you know these are all get up and they're fast they're, i forgot how loud they are and powerful i forgot mm-hmm. and then so that's what i'm about well you've laid it all bare on the album but do you fear that people will still judge you for mistakes made in the past yeah yeah i mean listen that is what it is isn't it i ain't got time to focus on them okay if they're, they're, if they're too interested and i let them do it it is what it is isn't it you're working for the male suicide charlie andy's man club what can you tell wow. me about the work they do yeah, um, it's it's really fantastic, you know. Um, they're a fantastic um, a club, anyway. For starters, what they do for people and stuff. Uh, yeah, do you know, if I can help just by talking or you know talking to someone, you know, if, if I can do anything, then because I've been there myself, you know, when I lost the plot and stuff. And um, yeah, it, I love doing it, and you know, people need to talk about it a lot more and be more more open because it's the men. Men don't want to talk about it, you know. But it's men. I think men are getting. You know what? Men are becoming more feminine, aren't they? With the nails, the hair, shade. You know. So you know what I'm saying? It's. Um, I think men should open up to that side. There's still a lot of men that are old fashioned and don't want to talk about things. But you know, I think it's improving. You know, and, and, and it's a great thing. The Andy Man's Club is a fantastic thing, and I'm glad to be a part of it. In April, you head out on tour again, yes. and you'll you'll be playing Belfast Lime Night in May, which I'm looking yeah. forward to. Are you looking forward to getting back out on the road and just blasting yeah, that just, album to people? Get, get out on the road and get my songs out, and, and, and the album's coming out in end of April. Get on get on the road and do my thing, and you know, yeah, just what I do. You know, it's it's my it's, it's my love in it. It's my life. So I just want to get on there and just get on with it. You know, so I got to roll my sleeves up and just go and take take it. And, grab it and go for it mate you know so what goes through your head when you're about to step on stage um love fear anxiety passion and hyperactive disorder that's all in one that's what happens yeah and i pray to god do my little thing and away i go really? but that's what he tried to send me to school i won't i won't have any of it <laughs> <laughs> that's it right. yeah my dad yeah because my, my my family's from um Nabin and, and uh, donegal 
Red? Yeah, so my, yeah, it's my dad's side. See, so my brother's John James, John James, and my dad's Thomas John John Patrick. You know, so there you are, mate. I'm, I'm one of you. Yeah, <laughs> Harry's name. Well, me I and... am, mate. My grandma and granddad moved over in the 1930s, mate. You know, bless their hearts. You know, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, ho- well, hopefully then you look forward to coming over to Belfast. That you're playing Dublin yes, as mate, well. I can't, wait, I can't wait, mate. I love Belfast. It's an amazing city. Um, it's just a great place. It's, it's just a great place in general, Belfast. I love it. I love playing Ireland, mate. I love it. Love it. I love play, I love touring, man. You know, I love doing my gigs. Well, when you're on stage, I mean, you're giving it all. How do you wind down after a show? How do you recharge? I got to recharge and stick my fingers in the socket. <laughs> <laughs> get, get recharged again for tomorrow. Like, <laughs> put me on charge overnight. No, mate. No, what, 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 again, like it's, it's a hard one, you know. Um, it's so fantastic. I, I, you know, I, I just, I just sit, sit down. We have, we, we, we do our thing. That, you know, have, have a family hug or whatever it is with a band. Have a cigarette and then I bring myself down. Maybe get into my bunk. You know, get into my bunk on the bus or whatever and and, and read a book. You know that. I know it's very not rock and roll. But I've been <laughs> but, rock. But I've been rock been, and roll. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not looking to answer for, am I? So. No, it is what it is. I'm a guy. No, I'm 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 a completely different person, mate. And you know, um, I feel good about a lot of things. You know, so positive, mate. It, it want positive energy, don't we? You know, absolutely. You'll support Noel Gallagher in August. How how did you feel when Noel asked you to, to play? Yeah, I was ecstatic. It, it was great. Um, it, it, it's nice. Um, he's a, he's he's a dear friend of mine and Leon. You know, um, like I said, we, we go back years. Got some great memories. Fantastic times. That took that such a fucking laugh. Yeah, I felt great. You know, it was nice. He's, he, I'm, I'm pals with him. I've known him years, man. You know, I fantastic. I can't wait. It, I'm really, you know, it's nice to know he's giving me support, bro. You know, which is great. Did any other musicians give you support when you were, you know, going yeah, through the bad times? Messages, you know, I don't go into names and that, but it's been, you know, I don't want to drop, start name dropping and stuff, you know. But yeah, you know, uh, it's it's cute. I mean. The guy, the singer from Coldplay, you know, I've been speaking to him. You know who he is. I know who yep. he is. I don't want to drop any Chris. You know who he is. Yeah, he's lovely. Just, just nothing but support and admiration. And, and I think that's, it, it, it's generally beautiful. You know, it's really, really nice. You know, it, it's just nice. If I wanted to make a playlist of the best Tom Main songs, now you need to help me out. What are the five songs from Kasabian and your solo stuff I should have on there? Okay, you should have uh, Seek and Destroy, which is off Empire. Uh, the Doberman, um, the party never ends. I would say uh, days are forgotten. I'm not picking the obvious ones, and oh god, there's so many, you know, so many songs. Um, I'd probably say God bless its acid house as well. Yeah, um, my, my five, the reckoning. Better in the dark, um, rise, acrobat, and scared. All belters. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I mean, your debut album's fantastic. It's coming out soon. You have it in the can. You've done loads of live shows. You're some more coming. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable as a solo artist now? I do, mate. I, I really do, bro. It's good. It's good. Good question, mate. Yeah, I do. Um, before I was all over the place. I was very, very nervous. Not been on stage for years. COVID happened. I, I was, you know, shit happened to me. Um, yeah, I, I was all over the place before I went on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a horrible gig, actually. I ain't gonna lie about it. It was. Um, I just got through it, and then after that, I felt better. It weren't a horrible gig, as in like the crowd for me because it wasn't I was like this you know but you gotta get it done and it's done now I felt I felt all over the place mate for the first show I didn't I didn't you know but I feel so much better now mate you know I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm more comfortable with, with myself you know and, and with, the, with the band as well so and what, what ambitions do you have going forward musically how high are you aiming See where it takes me, you know. Like I can't, you know. The, God will be the judge of that, mate. You know what I mean? Well, you know. So, um, yeah, just I just keep making music, man, and just keep doing my thing. You know, get 
get get this album back into where I belong. That's because it's all about the album, mate. Fucking singles. Who, who, no, listen, no one buys fucking singles anymore unless you're into pop music or whatever it is, or you're Drake and you release one every fucking day or whatever, or Ed Sheeran. Do you know what I'm saying? It's back for me. It's about the albums. So um, yeah, get my albums. Get me back in. Get me back in that spot. Um, so that get me back in. 28th April. I like to ask my guests the following questions. For us music fans, music is the soundtrack to our memories. What song or album, when you listen to it, brings back the best memories for you? Um, best memories. Best memories. Good question. I quite like, um, I like, you know, I like, I like listening to like stuff. Uh, like, I, I tell you what brings a lot of memories back for me. You know, um, Be Here Now. Yeah. That reminds me of being really young and starting a band with Surge, you know, things like that, you know, is that, that, and just, just being 17, you know, and starting and rehearsing in a room and, and, and aspiring to be that. That's what it means to me. Yeah. Then when I, when I hear Be Here Now, it reminds me of when I was young and we just, we just started, we, we were kids, you know, so, yeah. yeah that, I'm surprised you say that because a lot of people, you, you, you either love or hate that album. Yeah, I mean, to me, but it's got, it's got, it, it, it drives with me because it was part of my youth, you know, and a lot of everyone, everyone else's youth as well. A lot of people do hate that album. Oh, I think it's fucking great. It's loud. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I wouldn't be, well, I wouldn't be, you know, listen, again, if I hadn't heard that beer now, I wouldn't be here, you know, because saving wouldn't have happened. And, and what, would, what, what would the Tom, me and Natalia feel if, you knew you were, a few years later you're going to be on stage with Oasis. No, yeah, but I knew it was going to happen. Fucking crazy! Like I knew would mean. I knew. I knew. I knew it happened. I knew it would happen. I knew I'd be like toe to toe with Leon Gallagher. I knew it'd happen. Never a doubt in my mind. Ever in a million years. Ever. So it was great. And the fact is, they didn't, they didn't even hate us, which which was better because they fucking hated everyone. They loved us, so I loved it. it you know what, mate? Yeah, nothing but admiration. If you could go back and relive one musical moment from your career, what would it be? It'd be Glastonbury, Pyramid Stage. I think I think it was that that quick and that fast and that big. It went straight up, straight over me, <laughs> straight over my head. It was about one hundred and twenty thousand people, mate. It was like a massive attack when it got up against us and got crushed, like crushed. So it's what happens, you know, and. That was the moment, I think, it just went like that. It went straight over my head. I didn't even take yeah. it. In. Don't. It, it's insane. That was wonderful. Loved it. Yeah, it was. A, I watched it on TV and it was fantastic. Uh, mate, it was a wonderful moment. Yeah. yeah. So, Tom, is there anything else you would like to mention before we wrap up? Anything I'd else? Like my, my album's at April the 28th, please. So, if you'd like to go and buy it, help the cause. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, yeah. Just, uh, I just like to say thank you for the support and love and admiration. And you know, I'm on the way back, so I'm on the rise. Watch this space. Peace Absolutely. out. Absolutely, absolutely. Brilliant, Tom. Thanks very much. Thank you for your, hey, mate. Uh, thank you for your time and being supportive, mate. Appreciate it. I'll see you at the gig. <laughs> <laughs>